Welcome back to Goblins of Conquest. Hi, this is Kelly, a.k.a. Trixie from Ragnarok and Roll, assigned to Ragnarok Story, and Tilda Wimblewick from D&D Journey of the Fifth Edition. First off, I would just like to say thank you to everyone for listening to our varied adventures, as well as for rating us on iTunes and RPGpodcast.com. If you haven't rated us yet, we would greatly appreciate it if you could. And if you're looking for more ways to support our efforts, we are now on Patreon, a great site where you can help us continue making more podcasts, as well as some special surprises for our patrons. If you can, please look us up at www.patreon.com slash cppn. Every little bit helps. And again, thank you for listening. So did you guys want to go for the, the finishing line of the dungeon? Did you want to go on a sidetrack that we will ad hoc really quick? Maybe you wanted to go check out that underground, that uh, underdark corridor after you burned all the rustle mold out of that area. We did do that. Did you really burn all the mold? Did you? Yeah, I don't know. More oil on the <laughs> I know. Fire. Like, wait, wait. I thought I thought that Russell Mold we're 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 going to save at least some of that so we could send uh, send send some of the the other the number the the, the only numbered uh, goblin goblins and have them go play go play with the humans. <laughs> you know that's, that's like, that honestly that's a great tactic to use if you send a <laughs> goblin with Russell Mold into the human community. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he goes into the inn and ooh, bad things in- happen. Infects them, gets killed, Don't. comes back. Paladin they get killed. Would you, if we're within a certain, if we're within a certain range of him, doesn't he give us a bonus yeah. or something? I don't think at this level. At higher levels, he does the aura thing. No, yeah. I think we should not mess with the mold until we're like a little higher in level. To be honest. But, yeah, no, but, but keep keep it uh, keep at least a, some of it there for to play with later. Right. It's mold. Who are we kidding? Yeah. No yeah, well, you, you, can, you can't really get rid of it all. Come yeah. back. <laughs> well, didn't the rangers say you could harvest it? Yeah. Knew how to take care of it. Yeah, yeah. I, I definitely was something along those lines. <laughs> or, or, or were you? Are you? I think you, I think you were putting words in my mouth. <laughs> He'll put a handful in his pocket. I, 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 I think, George. I, I, I think the I think the bugbear would convince. The goblin. <laughs> <laughs> I can see the bugbear outsmarting the goblin here. It's like, yeah. We're scare tactics, but not anything else. I mean, I, you did say this, right? <laughs> <laughs> so by third level, yeah, divine magic throwing makes you immune to disease. So that's him. Yeah, all right. So it's probably like fifth or sixth level or something where he can. There was something. So like I, I said, played yeah, I remember, yet yeah, I remember in third there used to be the aura where it's really nice and you protect from poisons and disease. And it's like, hey, we don't worry about that shit here. Right. Well, I have played Paladin just about two years ago. Yeah, I played Paladin. Yeah, you know, and don't exactly get deep into the, the class skills. <laughs> right. <laughs> One and done. No. One and done is the worst way to do it. Right? I've got so many you have so many. We just had our second Star Wars group that was supposed to be a one shot. Now it's a campaign. <laughs> they had their first camp, their first one shot to try the system, and instead of showing up and playing the, the pre gen characters, they all started making their own characters. That was your first sign you're in trouble when they're making the characters. Oh, it's like, what's the? Granted, the nice thing is there's a, a guy by the name of Ugg, Ugg dude, who's got a character generator that in like ten minutes you can make a character up, and oh, they just print. Cool. Okay. Very cool. And then you print some PDFs to print up the stuff you can't legally print out, so, and boom, you're done. Yeah. They're playing all gray Force users. Not Jedi, mm. but Force users. Nice. All hunting a douchebag Jedi Jedi hunter. Because, <laughs> you know, he's he killed and took a trophy from each of their family members. The looks on their faces, and I'm like, which body part did he take? Oh, wow. I like gray Force, so... <laughs> Gray Jedi are the best. Yes, they are. Yeah, one of the DMs announced him kept posting about his Asian campaign he was running for his home group. And when it ended, several of us kept harassing him that he needed to run run it for us online. Uh huh. And then finally he did, and that turned into a campaign. We got to play one session and then we docked him into a campaign. So. That's just what happened? Yeah. 
Because there's no such thing as just a one shot. <laughs> right. You can get away with it. There's no such yeah, thing as a one no. shot. So I'm going to go over here and clean off the mat real quick. While well, you all are here, and I'm going to throw out the question of the day for RPG Day while I'm doing that. How about that? You like that? Is that tricky? Are we six? Already... We are on the six. I'm going to let them answer because I've answered. You can always amend your answer. <laughs> amend my answer? Yeah, we did a Form. video on it already, so. Mm -hmm. I know, I've yet, I've yet to catch up on my everybody's posts. Oh my so gosh, far. yeah. <laughs> and every year it gets worse. Yeah, he's like, uh, it I gets really better. feel bad. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I really feel bad. I haven't caught up yet. <laughs> Wait, there's a lot to catch up on. Hey, when everybody's doing videos, that's like three hours of stuff to watch every day. <laughs> Yeah. And then all of a sudden you're like at midnight trying to get that video out before midnight passes. Well, no, see, there's a reason why I have a channel and yet nothing on it because there's just... <laughs> How can a GM make the stakes important? Are you sure? Because I've got uh, How Can Players Make the World's Real is the sixth. So, oh yeah, we're, oh, we're, six. we're six. We're right? on seven. Yeah, because I already posted the six too. Well, so the you're right, today is the sixth. How can a GM make the stakes important? They gotta be T bone. <laughs> <laughs> and at least, you know, inch and a half thick. Woman's gotta have her standards. <laughs> Oak, maybe, maybe maple. Right? Please look through white ash. <laughs> so, have we done this question already? It's still recorded. Yeah, he's got the report on it. Oh. So you started it? Yeah. Okay. So Daniel's the first in order, or Michael is? I'm thinking Dan's first in order. We'll throw him out there. So how, do you, how does the GM make it important? How does the GM make the space important? Coping them well. No, uh. Right. You can't take my joke, I already said it. <laughs> no, you, you described what the state needed to be. <laughs> I described how you be prepared. I was expanding on your joke. I'm not terribly creative. Uh, uh, making sure that the, the players know that it's, it's part of a larger story. You know, that it's not just... I've always enjoyed, you know, all the stories are tied together rather than Disconnected serials. Mm -hmm. Even if it's episodic, it's you know connected. You know, an overarching story that's going on within each episode. Mm -hmm. okay. That's all you get. Yeah. <laughs> <Tell me. laughs> I'll go next. Uh, yeah, because recently another ca a different campaign uh, system, but at one point we're you know we're stranded on a on a on a place, we found a settlement from a different, a completely different nation, and they went ahead and let us be there for a little while, and then yeah, the GM kind of gave a little. All right, you can kind of throw your own secret ballot votes into the council for de deciding the the route that the, the, this town takes, and we're like, all right, well, the armory was more important than the library at one point, and that meant that we oh we were able to buy some gear, but no, we can't really enchant anything. It's like, oh, there's hospitals, but there's no law. So it's martial law kind of thing. So there's bandits, but everyone's healthy. Right. <laughs> yeah. And then, yeah, like, like those, those were pretty surface level things, but there was, there was definitely some, like some notions of we were kind of giving those very, very decision points things. And there could also be some future things going on, too. Like the Wolf of Yeah. That is important, like giving the players control of the world because you know it's not an MMO where pretty much you're on your set little track and you're spoon going fed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the storyline. Yeah, yeah. No, like, I, I, I saw into it. I saw into these, these decisions, but I'm like, I know what the character is going to do, and me as the player knows the repercussions. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but that's for the player to have to cope with. Yes. Making the stakes important. You know, there's multi way different ways you can look at it. I think that um, you know, is 
like in a quest line, and, you know, making the stakes important. Um, I've already used this portion, so making it personal. But, um, you know, making it important, getting player investment is important. So, um, in order to do that, possibly tying the characters together and through, you know, character questionnaires, um, you know, building the backstory so that they're intertwined, but then using that and building off of that to ensure that um, their investment is, their stakes involved, you know, if they don't do this. Um, meaning, if they don't follow through with the story or take action in some way, they're going to lose something major. So it's kind of similar to what you were saying, I think. Mm -hmm. Just said differently. Repercussions? Yeah. If you decide in front of the bandits instead of the red dragon, the red dragon's going to go do something. Right. He's going to burn down the town that makes the alchemy potions, so now healing potions have gone up 200%. Right. That makes an investment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or he burns down the caravan caravansary that, uh, that keeps stuff on the road coming to the different... A tributary. So now the adventurers have to be hired by as guards to make sure that doesn't happen again. Right. Or worse yet, the king's son was on that caravan and killed by a dragon. So the king now sees every dragon as an evil monster, including the good dragon that's like patron of the players. Right. The silver dragon. Or... And then the king wants to kill that too. Lose your dice. Yes, I was. I'll I lose was, your dice. Was... The best dice I've had. Except for when you roll them in. <laughs> what do you think? How do you think the stake's important? Not the stake of beef. <laughs> Honestly, I have really never even thought about it. And I, I mean, I think, think of the game from that perspective. I mean, I, um, I think. If I'm understanding it correctly, how do you like a jam to keep you invested in the story? Well, for instance, we had a really good bit of role play last night in the game, and I thought that was really great because it's just it it's just it's becoming more and more loose, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't seem like the game is as uptight as it did. In further on. So I think when you have more of a story and not always hack and slash, mm -hmm. that that becomes investment right there because you, you have, you know, as somebody who listens to your podcast all day long and I listen to it daily, um, I get invested in the story, not just the action. And I mean, I could sit there and I can listen to it and I say, oh, I rolled this and I rolled that and I'll be like, oh, or yeah. <laughs> but then, you know, it comes to the story plot and you're like invested in it so much. And as a player, I know that from that perspective, you get invested just as much. Mm -hmm. So if the, the person running, you know, gives that that time for character building on that level, then your the players are gonna be invested in the game even more. Mm -hmm. I definitely agree with that one. Keeping the stakes important for them. Mm -hmm. Because they're invested in it. Right. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. Because that way it's 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 equal partnership and ownership of the story. Absolutely. I mean you know, you're the guy. But we're the ones that are on this, you know, roller coaster. Mm -hmm. I'm setting, I'm painting the scenery. You're filling in the gaps. Absolutely. Which is everything. Right. <laughs> I mean, because you know, when you're telling the story of us being in these tunnels and we're seeing, you know, the moles, <laughs> the moles, <laughs> at, 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 for instance, or the greenhouse. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, the theater of the mind. You you envision it. You see it. And you're like, okay, yeah, it's on the little map there. But then you, you know, if it's told properly, and 
you're, you're investing in it and you've got stakes in the story, then you're seeing the trees in there. You're seeing little, you know, whatever. The, tree, the twig blades. Right. Yeah. Are, they, are they tall stakes? Bang. Huh? Are they tall stakes? That'd be you gross. can feed yourself for a long time on toast. <laughs> well, I mean, as a hobgoblin. And keep feeding. As a hobgoblin, I guess that would work. But um, <laughs> troll is a completely different species than hobgoblin. <laughs> yeah, right. It's not, not no, cannibalism. I, 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 I have an idea. I cut the, I cut the part the other your green meat. Off of. I have an idea <laughs> that for our keep guys. Uh huh. Hey, you know, you you've got to you've got to have some long term plans here if you're going to move into this place. No, and seriously, you know. Um, even though we're playing an, an evilish campaign, uh -huh. uh, evil from whose perspective? Yeah, you're yeah. just being a survivalist. It's mm -hmm. not evil from your point of view. Right. You're an oppressed people. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, it's Every, sooner, sooner or later, you know, all these fools will bow down to my god. You know, yeah. you know it's true. The problem is, every other weekend, you have these young yokels trying to prove that they're badass, pulling up in their pickup truck with a six-pack, trying to kick into your dungeon door to prove that they're real men that aren't men yet, just because you look different. We should have a room to deposit them in. <laughs> well, well, I think we found one last time. <laughs> the mole <mold> gate. <laughs> yeah. I think it was worse when they could grab a goblin and, you know, pick on him, string him up, That's torture him. Job. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Even when the drow oh, yeah. says not to do it, leaves town and comes back and finds out the shrug ma. Right. Most heart wrenching yeah. story ever. Oh. oh yeah, no. Like, uh, yeah, I don't even. I don't even think I could. I seize it as justification, but like I figured, you know, it was. It was like, like backstory wise, like yeah, he was going ahead and any of those trade caravans coming through. Uh, it's like, I'm strong. You're coming through my forest. That's my stuff now. I'm taking it from you. I'm yeah. taking. I, I'm taking it because it's now mine. He's yeah. like, not even like justifying it. Uh, you know, as like the entitled ownership. Yeah, yeah. I see here. Woods. This is my woods. Yeah, <laughs> you're the ones that come in. And I mean, pillage no, my I, trees. I'm literally raised by wolves, so right. Right. <laughs> it's a territorial. Yeah, thing. So just, yeah. From that perspective, it's like, um, okay, so I don't understand why you have such a problem with me because I'm just doing what comes natural. Mm -hmm. huh? It's his nature intent. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And see, so that, that is part of the whole meta story plot. You guys are going to be finding out what is the nature of a goblin. Why are goblins the way they are? I, somewhere, I think, in the history, there's an elf to blame. There's an elf, there's an elf to blame. Think there's about it. There's that goblin elf racial anger. It means, why is it that goblins hate elves even more than orcs? It's the bugbears. Yeah. But the, the murder mist bears, as the elves probably called them. All you know is this murder drop bear came out of the trees <laughs> and did an extra 2d6 before we even saw him coming. <laughs> Who said black bears had stealth? <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. I'm just saying. <laughs> Were the orangutan arms not enough? <laughs> right. And we go here. So, so I'm probably going to brain transplant with help. Okay, or electric shock. For my staff, yes. My clients, no. Okay, so have we decided, are we going to go on a, a side venture, or did you want to power through? Mm -hmm. It all comes down to you want to cut them out at this part of the story, while they're protecting your rear, making sure nothing comes through the mold. I think we should level up and do a side adventure. Well, level after we do the side adventure, and then they can lump along and head up. <laughs> <laughs> well, honestly, if we're going to you know, go on through, we really do need the other two. So. Yeah. Well, we could probably we, do the we other We need one, our right? road. <laughs> <laughs> the Rangers could do it in a pinch. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want the bourbon walk. <laughs> yes, exactly. I think it was already unlocked. He's no, no, an no. amazing lockpick. <laughs> no, no. My, my, that smudge on my hand was already there. <laughs> Don't mind the blood. <laughs> there was no mark on the door. Yeah. <laughs> Spit polish. Why is the door so shiny right there? We don't talk about that. Okay. So, I don't know. Yeah, I'd be fine with the side uh, side path. I'm, I'm powering through, but 
This is how we create interplayer conflict. I know, right? Then the group breaks into two separate groups. One that goes on ahead. Oh, okay. and no. One that goes on a side quest. Do not split the party. No, no, no. Well, I mean, we're not. The Goblin Fellowship is broken. We could do this. The Paladin could definitely power through while we take the side quest. <laughs> <laughs> he is emboldened by his deity. His God's Even got his back. The wrong one. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Meanwhile, his God's back. Oh, oh, dude, you shouldn't have done that. <laughs> right? <laughs> um, yeah, I think that it'd be probably a little better if we just did a side quest. And the reason for that is that, you know, there's that, that was crescendo that of the final yeah. fight. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Um, that would have missed now. I get where you're coming from and the fact that you lose, you lose. <laughs> But two people, you know, one third of the party missing out on yeah. the, right. the enjoyment we were just talking about <laughs> those sorts of things. But we are a third party. Yeah, that's yes. true. Ooh. Evil party. You tied them up and left them just bait for anything coming through the mall. Nah, I, we say, are an evil I party. say we make them babysit the goblins upstairs. There, there could be that. You could send yeah. the uh, hobgoblin upstairs to make sure the. The troops aren't getting up at him. Yeah. Aconite's going to have to go up. Yeah. <laughs> He's getting babysat upstairs. <laughs> what? Just hop on his back. I, I, no, I'm just like, like a little fussy child. I don't want to go to bed. <laughs> <That's> right? <laughs> <laughs> Tired, though. I don't want to do it. You can't eat me. I'm hungry. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I'll just pick him up. Yeah, no. Put him up. Put him, put him up there. I will tell you that while you guys were taking that long rest, as I shrink the map, so it takes up less space, in that big hexagon room with the mushrooms. The map changed. The, the, the map actually <laughs> uh, shifted. The, the archaeologist in the group said they've been digging in the wrong place and realized there's a concealed door there. The He's the archaeologist. Yes. Way yes. to go there, genius. I picked the background that's with us still. <laughs> because now that, you know, you guys are taking that long rest. Well, you know. You take the long rest. Doing. You know, you had, you had that beautiful bonfire over here in the, 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 the alleyway that's probably still warm, and that's why you guys aren't moving on. Right. As, as the oh, yeah. you know, right. as the rogue is sneaking around doing something, who knows what? Maybe she covered herself in ash and she's running down there like a ninja. <laughs> I bet mean, she ninja. finds a tree. Find to, it, oh, she'll find the tree and, and yeah, climb hide it. in it. <laughs> <laughs> out of nowhere, she will spring out and say, "I have picked its pockets. I found an apple." <laughs> Don't ask where he hides things. <laughs> All right, it's disturbing. <laughs> oh, or you turn around and you see the rogue come back and go, oh, with some trees that come out of his mouth. <laughs> and then you know shit just got real. I'm dead. <laughs> Turned into the, the, the tree zombie. Yeah. Do we have a new pet? I don't know why. I'm not dead. Perfect. Tree zombie. Just keep her away from flesh and blood people. I don't think she would like that very much. You know, like, I think she might take offense to that. Yeah. yeah. No. Don't make sense. You haven't offended anybody recently. It's like uh, no. clerics not high enough to, to save your life. I know. I'm just playing. <laughs> Do what? The clerics, the clerics what? not high no. enough to, to bring her back to life. No, not yet. Not yet. <laughs> I, I still have a little way to. I mean, I got spared the dying half about it. Hey, Spirit of Dying, that's an amazing power, I'm sorry. It's amazing. How many times have people not died because of one little slap on the foot spell? Be like... <laughs> so if somebody had... <laughs> no, not for you. somebody had cancer, no. they could just kiss I mean, it's, and it's not like, the dying. Uh, it's more like... Ping, or yeah, yeah. It's just miserable. Yeah. <laughs> that's how back. you get Deadpool. <laughs> <laughs> You're alive, but you look like hamburger meat. <laughs> Interesting. No, we need to do that <laughs> <laughs> for science, yeah, right? Because we can double it. <laughs> Ooh. Prince repeat, Prince repeat. Here, 
that that would be eat ugly. this mushroom. <laughs> In, inhale this. Don't worry, it won't kill you. I promise. You honestly make that promise. You spare the dying, it won't kill you. Kid. Oh, that's yes. true. That's true. <laughs> right. Until they wake up and say, "Kill me." <laughs> no. <laughs> that's what you tell them to do. Not today. Listeners, this might be right. I was recently reading about like some something where like someone had the power to like they really invigorated their healing, but you could try them out. It's like, oh, that's right. That was, that's the, the nurse in My Hero Academia. Oh, my gosh. She is so funny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, that's just She's the, like... <laughs> <laughs> you cannot but, like, today. Like the, but like the limitation of her power was yeah. along the lines of like, no, there's, if, they're, if they're terminal, they're still terminal. Yeah. <laughs> is that Do a war Well, yeah. Do you see it? Well, that's why she can't hero. Uh, she can't heal all night. So. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is that a war force? Uh, it's actually from the uh, Gears of War game. Oh, okay. It's oh, one okay. of the big bad guys from underground with his chainsaw staff. Because you need to make a chainsaw staff because, well, you know. You've already got chainsaw guns. Yeah. Okay. So you just and, need and, to and have someone a... else already has a chainsaw sword, so we got to one-off them. Yeah, you can't steal 40 k right. with a chainsaw sword. <laughs> Putting two so, so you become scary organic bad guy with chainsaw sack. It's like you gotta one up them. Yeah, okay, mine you is have, bigger than yours. I need a chainsaw ballista yeah. that shoots my chainsaws through the air. No, chainsaw staff. Yeah, a rim, rim saw. <laughs> yeah. But it's but, got but one on both ends. It's, 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 it's double. It's double headed. Because Darth oh, Maul taught us double is always better. Yes. <laughs> right. Okay, so I can get that by going to Home Depot and buying two. Yeah. It's a duct tape. Uh, Dead Rising 2. <laughs> then, then there is quite literally a, a, a weapon you can craft together. You put two swords on the end of a uh, canoe paddle. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> okay, in this case, just use chainsaws. But, but, but no, no, you're swimming, you're swimming through the zombies <laughs> with this. So you can just walk, swap through them. <laughs> Dead Rising, oh god. No, there's a game for modern. Concrete pole and a bat and car battery. You now have an electri- electrified hammer. Wow. <laughs> a it's, concrete pole. Yeah. You bust the, get the pole out of the concrete, which is a knob of concrete, strap on the battery to it, wrap some wire around it. Then they went completely realistic with the vehicles for the third one, what? in which you can put a, if you have a motorcycle and a steamroller together, you have a flaming steam, uh, flaming motorcycle with a steamroller on the front just run over. I can see it. It sounds totally legit. Yeah. No. You just put them together, push a button, and they're there. It's there. Oh, jeez. You start being able to, yeah, you're able to combine vehicles the with, with the third one. Uh-huh. <laughs> That white frame spent as wide as it can get. Yeah, right. So uh, you guys finished your long rest. Obviously, the rogue and the fighter slash hexblade is uh, securing your, your, your rear. As uh, the archaeologist whipped out his little brushes, because you have your archaeologist kit, right? You do. And he started brushing one of the walls. We saw a little bit of mosaic. And all of a sudden realized that this mosaic was just goblin finger painting over mud that was on what, what he discovered to be a very finely crafted stone door. So, wow. so as soon as you clear it off and you, you, you get the rest of the fungus out of the way, you know that there's a door there. I wonder if it's trapped. Oh, I can't mock. Well, yeah. since, the, since the rogue is nowhere to be found, Next. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. I'm like, I'm like uh, I got, we I only do, have one more expendable goblin. In there. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> needs to put a belt on the road. <laughs> just, 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 yeah, that's, that's right. She just disappeared. <laughs> Unfortunately, when you put the bell on her, you didn't realize the little ringer inside is removable, so she keeps taking that part out. So just in case she listens to it, you know, gee, sure wish we had a road about now. Right. <laughs> Yeah, I like what it, what what is it to the to check the door again? Uh, basically, investigate. Investigation. Oh, mm-hmm. my investigation is zero. I was hoping it'd be like a little more dexy. Oh, but I got seventeen. So so you start looking at the door. You, you basically you're poking your eye into oh, the yeah. keyhole. You're looking around. You know, you're like, this door seems safe. 
you seem 100% certain this is safe. Beyond a but, shadow but, 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 but of a doubt. But I am small, and I, I, I look up to the big guy with the shield. Expert giant, ready? <laughs> so, like, I, 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 I feign that the door's a little too hard for me to push open, though. I'm not a very good actor, by the way. <laughs> I, 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 I readily, I, I just readily, I can't quite open it, but it's safe. I can almost see you turning to him doing a big thing. I will attempt to open the door. Okay, yes, go, go ahead and give me a uh, strength check as you try to bust the door open. So 17. 17? Oh, you grab that door, you do that whole, you twist the knob at first to make sure it's actually unlocked, you know, not unlocked. And then you just put your weight into pulling that door in and you just, you know, the door comes busting open. And you see it just drag some of the dirt that was in the way of it. Clear, so you got that little swoop of dirt now out of the way. And you just see a dusty set of stairs that go up about seven. Do a little perception. Which is quite interesting because, you know, this room is like 20 foot ceilings in here. Hmm. Yeah. I'll do a little perception check. Nice peek, peek around in there. Uh, 17 plus uh, 4. 21. Okay, for your sneak or your perception? For, for, uh, oh, I, I, I. No, I, I was not being sneaky. I was. I, I went in. I just. I was curious. I looked right up the. What's the, what's the doors open? Okay. I just, I, yeah. so, so as he's pulling it, you're sticking your head and looking, and you look up there. And, and uh, you see a lot of scratches about in here, but okay. it does not look like there, there's anything in here. Oh, no, it, mm-hmm. it doesn't look like rat scratches, oh, unless okay. they're really big rodents of unusual size. Well, that's well, not po- a possibility. Yes. Some uh, tree blighty scratches, some cobalt weapony scratches. <laughs> Uh, you get a 17. It doesn't qu- it quite look like... It looks like someone used well, a lot of... It was 17 on the die. It's 21 mm-hmm. total. Oh, even better. Yes. It de- definitely does not look like tree blights in it because you've realized with the wood they would have left sap marks okay. or something. It seems like something clean and hard like stone or metal did the scratches. And they look very much like, you know, almost like claws. If something had, you know, really hard claws... That left lots of little little hand scratch marks in the stone. Because remember the inside of the door is stone too. Yeah. You can see the inside; it's got oh. scratches going down, like something tried scratching its way through the stone door. Don't dead open inside. <laughs> <laughs> right. I don't watch the show. You're walking I don't watch the show, and I know where that's from. That's that's good. <laughs> I stopped watching that show. But yes. Yeah, that's the episode I stopped watching it on. Aww. It, it slowed down way fast. It, oh, yeah. This... Also, it didn't help that my DVR kept uh, cutting out while recording it, so I was like, eh. <laughs> I'll go in on it. Okay. So, so the paladins walk in the room. What are you guys doing? I will follow cl- uh, closely behind him. Uh, Boa, be ready. You guys are doing a great job. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go, as, in, I'll go in there. As, you, as your wizard and resident uh, advisor. He could be squishy outside. I don't care. I'll go in there. <laughs> I'm going to take sure. another direction sure. into the room. Then. The what? Sure. Use the staff. To oh, uh, you don't have that ability yet. So for 12, you get those. Yeah, we're just going to cut them real handy. Oh, I, I didn't bring that. Up. No, I said I wanted to go into a different direction in the room that these guys and everyone else would check in. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to start using my reach with my quarter staff because technically if I'm tapping the floor for something, you know, trying to see if it's hollow or what have you. Okay, go ahead and give me, give me a perception check. Oh, four. Four? Mm-hmm. So, so you start poking around and uh, all of a sudden, because you're poking around here, as you're poking around the wall, walking back and forth, tapping the wall, then looking kind of weird as they're going off without you, you actually hear a crumbly sound. It's like almost like moist, wet dirt as you poke, and it just starts crumbling. 
revealing another stone door. Over here? Over here. So we've officially split the party? I don't know, everyone's in the room, so it's one stone. Oh, okay. <laughs> Stairs right. go up to here. Um, so I'm going to leave it for now and come back to the other room with the party. Okay, so you're joining them? Mm-hmm. Giving them a nice, nice head, head start? Right. So as you come up here, you notice this door is slightly ajar. It's, it's another really nice stone door, but it looks like it's been beaten pretty well, and it's kind of like tilted okay. out of its axis. Jar. And how quiet are you then? At no point did anyone say stone. Not blocks. terribly. <laughs> at, at no point had he thought of being stealthy. Yeah. Then he answered his mind. <laughs> it's a long dead crypt. Why do I have to be stealthy? I'm wearing a chainmail, carrying a sword, and a shield. Yeah, you are not stealthy. <laughs> <laughs> it's not really my thing. You, you can try to be stealthy. Clicks and pops. And Clank. That's okay. I'm wearing scale. I'm wearing scale, so. I will say the 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 scratches have probably made, uh, tempered uh, some of Akonai's curiosity. So he's going to start at least being trying to be full sneaky. Oh, and he's not at all. I roll a I, I roll a critical one. Somehow he the scale, he's making more noise than the one that's just. I was. I, it's, it's. I'm telling myself, be quiet, be quiet, be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> Out loud? Yes. I am super sneaky. <laughs> I am <laughs> super stealthy. I am one with the night. I am the Batman. I shouldn't have eaten that rat. <laughs> <laughs> I hate when I'm stealthy and flatulenty at the same time. <laughs> so, so in what order are you guys traveling? I <laughs> yeah, I think it was Pally, Ro- uh, Ranger, Rogue, Wiz. Oh, not Rogue, no, no, Pally, Power Ranger, Cat. Uh. Uh. I'll use that one. <laughs> At a distance, kind of. Sort of. I don't care. I used this one last time, so. He doesn't care which one. Uh-oh. We need a goofy one. <laughs> There's a goblin in a wedding dress. <laughs> right? <laughs> there's, there's, a, there's a ghost in the, the way. barmaid with the come hither. There we yes. go. <laughs> All right. All right. I was assuming we were, we were approaching the door. Yeah. Yep, because as you yeah. come up, it's about a seven foot rise of the stairs, and you see the door slightly ajar. As you come up, you, you, you're just. Lizard? Sorry, please continue. <laughs> no, it's okay. As you're just nice. about to get almost within arm's reach of the door. The door comes flying open. Okay. Go ahead and give me a deck save to see if you get out of the way in time. You made a death saving throw? <laughs> Dex. <laughs> Already? <laughs> 17. 17? Okay, so as you do, the door flies open, and you do the little, you know, hippie hop back, so you're just out of the way of the door, as all of a sudden, a skeleton comes just blindly flaying itself, almost, almost, you know, zombie-ish, towards the noise it's here. My bad. And it's not alone. How many is... <laughs> You, you, I can tell you, you know for sure there are a few more in there. Mom? <laughs> Bring your mini back into play. <laughs> okay, everybody roll initiative. You're tied in the back. God. That doesn't sound Damn good. Damn it. Who's growling up there? Uh, I need to clicky breathe, clack of the skeleton teeth. All super excited that there's movement again. Who knows how long they've been sitting there waiting for that door to be opened? No. I'm not going to have these on. I'm not going to figure out I did something. Sorry. 
Okay, so what'd you get for initiative? Nine. Okay, that's 23. Oh, Jesus. What did our cleric get? A mighty four. It's a strong healing four, I sense. <laughs> and the paladin who's got 16. 16? Aw, oh, that dice ain't doing the great things it did before. No natural 20s. I got a couple of those yesterday on Sunday. On the pit Oh boy. <laughs> Good times. Okay, so Tithe is first. Tithe is first. Um, Good thing you can share space with that goblin if he wants to. Yeah, I know. Yeah. There's a hot job, Hip Jib, in the way. <laughs> hip Jib? You can always reach over. <laughs> true, true. <laughs> Alright, this so it's 15. Yeah, this could be. Oh, I don't know if that'll balance. That, that, that's, that's me when we're cooking. <laughs> right. There we go. You in a moose bush mode. He does have a wider base. Mm -hmm. Um. And I do have a five foot reach, so technically I'm. You can go right over his head. And it's and got the door wide open, and it's like. Ah, ah. It's got this horrible, horrible, broken, sharp, spiny sword. You know, it's all jagged and disgusting looking. You know, skeletons got rotted leather armor on it, little patches of brown, gray everywhere. Not for long. I'm going to wreath my blade in green flame. Okay. You go lightsaber on him? strike. And not strike. For an eight. So you you basically hold up your light stick to light the paladin's way. Right. Okay, so you... That's kind of you. It is. And, and, I, that's how I roll. So. And, and of course the eerie green light no bathing funny. the skeleton, you know. Mm -hmm. See, look. The picture even has eerie green light on the skeleton. Nice. Yeah. It looks going to happen. I planned that. Yeah. So uh, you swing and, and you miss. Yep. But but you do line, light up the shot for the paladin. So it's not in the doorway yet? It's it's smashed the door open, and it has not stepped through yet. Okay, I'm going to step into the doorway. Okay. And I'm going to cast uh, Shield of Faith. Oh, Okay. So you cast Shield of Faith on yourself? Yep. So what does your Shield of Faith for a tyrant look like? <laughs> Just like the armor growing uh, spikes and blades. Okay, so it just gets also menacing and... Yeah. Okay, casting menacing shadows across it. Okay. So you're standing there now, queefed in your magical armor. It's always nice to say queen. <laughs> so ranger, it is ranger danger time. All right, um, do better. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the bugbear was also lighting your way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I know. I, I, I'm, I'm basically looking up. I'm wondering if I, should, I should pop if I should pop hail of thorns and get the two and target the one in the middle. Uh, get the guy. Yeah, I'll go. I'll go ahead and, and, and uh, pop Hail of Thorns. Okay. And so, so I'll target. Uh, I think it's and that's a to make sure it's a creatures, right? Yes, yeah, creatures. So yeah. So I'll go ahead and target this guy with my, my arrow. Okay. Let's see. We got a natural twenty. That'll kind of hit. <laughs> <laughs> kind of. If it bad. misses, we're all screwed. Yeah. Okay, so what's the radius of your hill of thorns when it uh, five uh, creatures within five feet? Okay. So, so the arrow itself will do max as max on the arrow is uh, eleven. Okay. <coughs> well, you, will you still roll for damage? Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. You get the, the extra die though. Oh, okay. That's, yep. that's, okay. I, I I was playing Gamma World. And that was that was the max damage rules. I forgot. Okay. Well, it's, it's, it still works out to be eleven. Eleven points. Yeah. As it ex. Your arrow explodes and just pockmarks the skeleton full of meat. There are holes going through it, ribs missing. It's got dark sticking into its jowls. You know, it's like, I haven't even gone yet. Yeah. 
And now and how I'm much... traveling in the morning. <laughs> so, so the and then for um, the Hill of Thorns, uh, they must make a uh, Dex save versus uh, twelve. Oh, good lord. Okay. Pink dice is the one in the in the dress. Ooh, what's your DC? Uh, twelve. Yeah, not so much. All right. Um, I only rolled a uh, four points of damage to in the burst. So this one explodes. Just your arrow went through him, and then it exploded out. And his bones become part of the fragment. And how much did this one? Uh, four. Okay, and you shoot that arrow, and it just explodes him. He just oh. exploded. Explodes. Exploded. So both of them explode. Yeah, well, this one's. Or, still, oh, okay, okay, yeah, okay. No, the no, one no. your arrow hit okay. when it ex- when the thorns exploded out, yeah, yeah. it just it oh, yeah, yeah, vaporized. Yeah, yeah. No. Okay, but the other the other one's still standing, but it's he he he, he got hit. Yep, he he's, he's pockmarked. He's pockmarked. He's gonna try to pull the And it's their turn. Can you shield the face the bonus thing? That's for the paladin to know at second level. Oh. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna zoom <laughs> in on that one. Just say it. <laughs> so says the magic guy. He's like, hey, I made my arcana check. <laughs> so this skeleton is going to actually go for a grapple with you. Because he's going to try to push you out of the out of the doorway. Wants to give you his Give me his teeth. No. So uh, go ahead and give me a opposed a athletics or acrobatics check. Ooh. Shit just got serious. Eighteen? Nope. Oh, man. He has no bonus, but you rolled a nineteen. So this, this skeleton just grabs on and just clenches you. Actually, you're a hot dog. <laughs> mm-hmm. Do you want to say face? Yeah, that would be not. <laughs> <laughs> I've been out wrestled by a skeleton. This is bad. <laughs> okay, so so burn your saving face, and as it grapples you, it it starts to grab you and pull you into a grapple where it was going to drag you into the room, and all of a sudden you just like, nope, that's a bad. Stop. He says, you don't want to be wrestled by a guy with no muscles. You don't want to be out wrestled by a guy with no muscle. And, and the skeleton, uh, as soon as you do that, it's going to uh, actually step back in. <laughs> Go away. And, and it steps back in no for some weird, odd reason. You're not interested. No, Shut the door. No solicitors. <laughs> okay. Okay. Do you want to take a tackle opportunity, or do you have no... Oh. Do you have no bonus actions left? I didn't take bonus actions, so... I will take a swing at him. Okay. I was wondering that you let me move away from you really fast. Thirteen. Thirteen? That will hit. Cool. Sound just like that one, the one when you want to do short hit him. So, Twelve. Twelve points? As you smash into him and just take one of his arms off, gouge your weapon through his ribs, he looks like hell. But he, he's still there. And the ominous whooshing sound in this cavern is his effect abated. The AC. <laughs> okay, so... Um... So you didn't move, you just... Nope. Swung at it as a step down. And this one's going to come at you. Okay. This one, you know, has got, you know, the, the, the grayish red stuff on him. Oh, yeah, that's right. Nobody really perceives too well. <laughs> more like More like mole. <laughs> oh, my God, it's a mole. Oh, it's a mole. <sighs> and, and he's going to swing on you. Because that's, that's, that's what he does. Oh, I think he just and, broke his arm. And instead swings on the door, and his sword just shatters when it hits the door. <laughs> and, 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 you know, then it makes this really sickly attempt to, like, step back. With, with Oh, you the, already used one. Yep. With a broken handle. 
that was once a sword at one point. But that also means that I can strike with an attack of opportunity because it's within five feet. You're in this square. He's actually on top of the dome. Yeah, but right here, remember, you moved into the doorway. You stepped forward. Oh, okay. So Dan's in your threatening square right now. I could hit Dan. Yeah, you you <laughs> could, you could hit the hobgoblin. If you hit the hobgoblin now, none of the other hobgoblins will notice, right? <laughs> Aconite will notice. Yeah. So? It stands between <laughs> us. He's like, what do you think? I'm not paying attention or something? <laughs> You're just waiting for someone's hit points to drop. It's like, wow, you're just looking at the life bars. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Healers don't get to enjoy the game. I'm not that cleric anymore. Aww. <laughs> that was me and Everquest. Aww. And it is your turn. It is my turn. Um, Everquest. I, I, right back in the field. Six, six years that stole my, you know. Is this About guy undead? Uh, they're, they're all undead. They're all undead, yeah. Um, okay. Oh, the cleric's going to get into her book of clericiness. Yes. Uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. How far away are they, and can I see them? From where I um, you can if you come up and join the group, there's even an empty square right there. Okay. Mm-hmm. So how far away are they? Uh, Like 10 feet. 15 feet. Uh, turn on back. So you channel your divinity. Yes. You whip out your holy symbol, and what do you say? Go the fuck away. <laughs> <laughs> And what's your spell DC for that? How poetic. I know, right? Oh, uh, 12. Um, and remember, they get they get cloaked in a black inky aura. Inky aura of badness. Yes. As immediately you fire that off and this like wave of dark energy comes out of you and hits both of them and you notice them literally start clicking and clacking. Their joints are, are shaking in pure undead fear. And they seem to be preparing to run through this door that is also slightly ajar. Okay. That happened to me when I used to bad Mexican. Yeah. <laughs> well then. All right. That's so they seem right. like they're getting ready to run. Just turn tail, turn tail bone, and run. Okay. Well. It's the pun. Yes, the, it had to be in there somewhere. Wizard, you saw the the divine magic. It was not. In any way superior well, see, to your I've arcade. Moved, I've done this. I don't think I have anything else I can do, can I? Because I don't have any secondary. Uh, bonus action wise? I think so. I think just a healing spell. Yeah, so I don't think anybody needs a heal right now. Nope. So. nope. Everyone's okay. untouched. So, next. <laughs> <laughs> so it's me? Yep. Top of the order. All right. They are fleeing now. They, right? there, you can tell that they are getting ready to run through this room and get away from the danger, which is the Dark Queen of Death. Her death power trumps their death power. I'm going to strike at that one with a green blade. Green flame blade. Staff. Again. <laughs> Try this again. Okay. 16. That will hit. So it's 1d8 plus uh, fire damage. So it's 10 points and then the fire damage. So 10 points of blunt? Yeah. That's why I said that. 10 points of blunt. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, okay. So I declared this one as the target. And uh-huh. That's what happens. But then the next creature, green flame, leaps from the, to the second target within five feet and takes fire damage equal to your spell casting ability, which is plus two. Okay, so, so it takes two points of fire damage. So you're striking the one that the paladin already hit? And he explained. Well, I declared this one as the target. Oh, sorry, thank you. And then, yeah, I, I okay. burned that one, but it ended up. Okay, so you hit the, the one that the ranger pockmarked with, with thorns mm-hmm. and do uh, a little more damage to him. He's still moving around. He's got uh, some, some, some cracks going through his skull. He's got some pockmarks. And then your flame leaps across to the other one, and immediately... The bone powder catches flame with your green flame, and for a second, it's it's completely illuminated with green flame. So you got black and As it just just instantly crumbles from the heat, and the pieces of blackened bone hit the ground. Nice. And then, as the other one walks through, I just put my quarterstaff between its legs. <laughs> <laughs> 
Because it's running away. It's going to be running yeah. away. He, oh, yeah. he, he put himself in a very good position. Okay, so Paladin. I'm going to go step over the other door. <laughs> okay. And unfortunately, it failed its save, so it cannot. So you're going to go here, or? Yeah, we're walking right there. Okay. So it's it does not get an attack of opportunity because it's devoting everything it's, to running. I dared. <laughs> it's very terrifying. Ah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. As uh, it's interesting, you went to that door. Uh oh. Yeah, it's, it's it's super <laughs> interesting. Okay. All this this clamoring noise, yeah. all these great things going on. Ranger, yes, what would you me, like to do? Uh, me back in place. Of me. Um, yeah, uh, I, I will do what a ranger does and fire my arrow, uh, fire my bow. So you want to come inside the room? Which yeah, yeah, oh yeah, so, so I'm not, it's not a disadvantage, yes. Okay. Yeah, that's so still at range, right? It's that's not running range. anymore. Uh, because uh, the creature is turned for one minute or until it takes damage. Oh. So it is no longer running in peace. I didn't know that. Hmm? I disavow any knowledge of the divine <laughs> magic. <laughs> so, so, uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, 17. That will hit. Yes. And that will do 9. 9 points of piercing damage? Piercing damage, yes. That's that's good to know. Yes. Because as your arrow goes through, it goes yeah. in one eye socket and just shatters the back of the skull cap. Ooh. As it goes falling back. Back into the left. And just explodes into you know, a pile of, of stray <laughs> bones with some weird brownish must coming off of them. Yes, <laughs> yes. As the cleric puts on her gag. <laughs> okay, so at that moment, since it is the skeleton's turn, the door that you're standing next to that's ajar... All of a sudden, a very large hand comes reaching in. Since you're right there, all not being sneaky at all. Seriously, I got this perfectly large size. As uh, go ahead, and give me a athletics or a acrobatics check. As someone's going to be wrestling. Because damn you and tiny doors. Oh, that's dirty. That's super dirty. Is it not being good for you? Apparently. We joked that the pink dice are the bad dice. This dice is the one that gives me down to explains all the time. Okay, as this giant, and I'm saying giant hand, reaches in to grab you, as the door just slams open, because obviously you could hear you standing on the other side of this open door, bashing away. And the fingers just brush against your shield and then pull back, and you're realizing that there's a minotaur skeleton on the other side of this open door. A minotaur skeleton. A minotaur skeleton. That's freaking awful. (laughs) (laughs) That's a lot of that. I mean, you could always do a perception wall if you want to stick around there on your turn. I mean, just saying. But cleric... It's your turn. You realize that uh, they killed the skeleton that you wanted to scare away. The bastards. How, 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 huh? I know, right? No, you 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 hit and went over here. No, I didn't hit. You just, no. Oh, no. that's true. Yeah, you, you just, just walked yeah, you past. Just moved. Hand, hand came out. The hand, well, the hand came out on the skeleton's turn. Okay. Well then. You saw the big bleach yellow bone hand come swiping in the doorway and pull back out. We're talking, you know, a foot wide wrist. Wow. Um, well, I can't actually do anything because I can't technically see it at the moment. You can move. I can move, and that's what I was going to do. You can go stand up and reinforce our ally here. And see well, what I don't want to at. get. <laughs> I want to. I thought you embraced it. I want to. Not my own. <laughs> she embraced it. She doesn't want to embrace her. All right. So I, I will 
be out of range of, you know, the big old hand. But, you know, right. if if he gets hit, then, you know, I'm right there for him. It's good teamwork. Yeah. Mm-hmm. To spare the dying. Okay. Yeah. And, exactly. And with you standing there looking, you're realizing there is this large minotaur skeleton that's kind of like hunched to reach in the doorway. Because you can tell it can't fit through that doorway without squeezing through. It is in a bad situation. And that's a good place to wrap it up there. Thank you for listening to the Creative Play and Podcast Network. And feel free to enjoy our other shows, such as D&D Journey of the Fifth Edition and Scion Ragnarok and Roll, a Scion hero to Ragnarok story. Thank you for listening. Hello, this is Eric. And Wendy Strzok with Stone Valley Hobby and Games. We sell board games, card games, role-playing games, and supplies. We have thousands of Magic the Gathering cards available, carry Kickstarter products, and work with veteran-owned small businesses to bring you our own line of products. We are a small business retailer, but we offer competitive prices, a loyalty system, and free shipping on orders over $100. As a military veteran myself, I'm a strong supporter of our armed forces, their families, and contractors out there doing the hard job. So any order from an AA, AE, or EP address will be shipped absolutely free. Remember, StoneValleyGames.com, where we take your leisure seriously. So uh, at some point when you're getting to where you basically are, and you, you conveniently will find an a old library to the dragon that used to live here, there's a record in one of his books of a goblin ziggurat. Oh, boy. Which, of course, back when the dragon was alive in this castle, was sunk hundreds of years ago. The ziggurat was not in the middle of a nasty swamp, but now it's in a nasty swamp. Is that a good jumping point for the next chapter of your story? Now that you have a home base, and you may or may not have a tr- magic tree that makes magic apples. So what we're saying is, this is going to be our established home base. Yeah. If you wanted yeah. to. I mean, be- you... Yeah, that's zero. I, I know, I know, yeah. I know, but... But you don't you slept since then? I have slept since then. Because it is a nice place to have a goblin worn because it's off the beaten path, you know. Even if, even if you don't have a magic yeah, tree. Getting, getting in and out, though, then we have to deal with, like, rats getting in here. Well, that's because, you know, the goblins leave the rats, you know. They, they feed the rats. They play with the rats. You can choose to keep the rats. I mean, you have people with animal handling. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think it's cool. Or that's did you good. guys want to do something else? Because you could always go murk yourself to the human community because, you know, you do have enough hobgoblins to say that we're mercs and sell our services out. That could be fun. Because there is that whole idea of, you know, hobgoblin mercs until they realize they're stronger than you and they decide to take over. Hmm. But we're trying to rebuild an empire. Yeah. And yeah. discover more of the secrets of what, it's, what it means to be a goblinoid. What was your lost, forgotten history? Right. So, I think a ziggurat. Yeah. Next. Oh, yeah. 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 No, no, that's... Especially, yeah, especially if thinking. an ancient dragon's writing a book about an ancient goblin stronghold. It's probably a huge book. Yeah. Well, <laughs> if the dragon wrote it's it. It's probably a really big book that's rotted really well. <laughs> or it's got one letter on each page. <laughs> D. <laughs> R. <laughs> Polymorph. It's not just for fur writing in books. All right. <laughs>